Hello, Wine Club member! Back for another installment of July's Wine Club with Angie Sun with the luxury and value wine. So this month we got quite a few more of you joining us. So if this is your first time watching, thank you so much. And usually I like to have a scene for every month's wine, but this month is a little different. We got one white and one red, one from Italy and one from France. So I think the topic of this month will be trust me and i think the reason why i bought these two together or i wanted to showcase these two wines with you is because these are wines i think most people are not on most people's radar but once you try correctly you might just love them for the rest of your life so we're gonna start with the red wine first um there's no secret that i'm a huge fan of italian wines and i am fun and determined to make you fall in love with Italian wine just like me too. So today we have the producer Marcarini is a Dolcetto di Alba. Dolcetto in Italy literally translates into little sweet wine. So this is a little, well, but it's, um, I guess it's a little, it's a little misleading because the wine itself is not sweet at all. Although some uh, Dolcetto, Dolcetto producer and the, the slightly cheaper producer sometimes will make their wine light and pink and kind of sweet. This is not the case. There are a lot of very serious Dolcetto producer out there, this being one of them. So if you had Dolcetto before and you didn't have a great impression, be ready to be blown. Now, the very special thing about this producer or this particular wine is that this is from one of their single vineyard that was planted more than 100 years ago. It is Preflacera, and it literally is named the Bochi de Berry, which means the berries of the wood. So it is going to be very different. So Dolcetto generally has similar characteristic as what would you say, like a, almost a lighter style of a Pinot Noir. But with the century year old vine, plus just the way that they make the wine with more, um, more care and love, it's not going to drink like that at all. So it will be kind of like a Pinot, but a little more earth to it. So I think this is gonna be great to drink over the summer, especially if you're eating something outside, something light, something fun. If you're doing a pizza night, it just, it would just be great. So please enjoy it. This is going to be fun. The other one is a little more serious. I kind of decided to take a chance and put this wine in your wine club is, as I mentioned, most of my wine club are red just because most people do like red better than white. But hey, we are in the middle of summer, so there's no better time to introduce a really worthy white now than ever. So this is the 2011 Francoise André Coton Chardonnay Grand Cru. Grand Cru, eh? You know, Burgundy is my gen. So this is a bottle of wine from France, from Burgundy, and from uh, the southern part of the Burgundy main region, so Côte de Bon, and it is in a vineyard that's deemed as one of the best, so it's considered Grand Cru Vineyard, it's called Côte Charnemay. The producer himself is relatively new. They only started making wine back in 1983, and they are really big on all organic farming and biodynamic farm, farming style. And a lot of the time in Burgundy, when you're going to the Grand Cru status, which is top of the top, you start to see a, most producer will start to a lot of new oak at the wine because the wine can't handle it, the vine can't handle it, the soil can't handle it. But this producer are pretty self-handed on his new oak. He does just like the wine to sh come back showing off with freshness and he just kind of like that natural flavor he doesn't like too much influence to it now why did i put a white burgundy in there for a couple of reasons there are a couple of camp of people i think that's in the wine club either you are already a lover of white wine or chardonnay this is made with a chardonnay grape but you're used to drinking the buttery like thick california um, Chardonnay. So I want to give you an alternative to try something a little bit fresher, something that has higher acidity, something that has a little more uh, mineral, mineral, minerality and mineral driven, kind of something that pairs better with food instead of trying to one up the food by being big and really perfumey, if that makes sense. Uh, on the other hand, this wine I'm also putting it here to challenge those of you who almost never drink white wine. You have no idea how many of my friends and clients over the years who used to be Napa King or Bordeaux King or like, I never drink white wine, I don't care about white wine, white wine give me blah blah blah, insert excuses there, who have tried an amazing Grand Cru Burgundy and changed 
their entire life and now they can't get enough of it. That is kind of the beauty of a well-made Grand Cru Burgundy. So instead of that vanilla sweet flavor sometimes you'll get from Chardonnay here made in the new world, you get more of that nutty flavor, peanut, hazelnuts, and a, 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 a just a little more subtle, a little more roasted notes. A uh, couple of things I do want to talk about with this bottle of wine to kind of make sure because I'm not there next to you drinking it with you. I want you, I want to make sure you do a couple of things. Promise me you'll do it. First, obviously, you do want to chill the wine, but you do not want to over chill it. This is one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of the white wine drinker makes, and that kind of skew them towards either one style of white wine or the other. Meaning, when you over chill the wine, the wine becomes very shut down. So if you just pull the thing out of your fridge and you open and start drinking it, you're not going to get a lot of the great aromatic coming off on the wine because the wine is very shut down. All you're getting is that really racy acidity and it's just going to cut right through your mouth and you're going to be like, oh, this thing is really tart and I don't really like it. And that's actually my theory as in why there are people who just lean um, towards a heavier and heavier and oakier and higher alcohol style of Chardonnay because they're over chilling their whites. So they're not tasting it. So uh, hence they need wine that has even more in it. So what I would do is put it in your fridge and take it out about 10, 15 minutes before you're going to drink it. Then you pour it and you drink that. The second thing is make sure you are not filling this. <laughs> I know kind of if you had a hard day, I know sometimes you just want a huge glass of wine, but please make sure when you have a wine glass, pour just a third of the way or halfway, make sure you have a big enough glass. So it's not just like to, all the way to the rim. There's no surface tension. You want room in a glass for the wine to breathe so you can swirl it so you can allow the aroma to kind of come out of the wine and get mixed into the air and goes into your nose because that's 85 percent of what you're really enjoying with the wine is really what you're smelling through your nose with that being said i hope this wine will change your mind rather you are naturally a pinot uh sorry naturally a california chardonnay drinker or you don't even drink white wine at all i hope this will change your mind with that being said i tell Tell me what you think about it. I hope you enjoy it. And as per per usual, both of this wine's retail price go way over how much we're charging for the wine club. That's one of the benefits of joining the wine club. I go out and look for really amazing uh, quality of wine at a really ridiculous price point just to share with you guys. So thank you for entrusting your trust uh, every month into trying the wines I think is absolutely awesome. Enjoy and I will see you next month. Bye.